Okay? Three, two, one. First Mike O'Mara show of calendar year 2013, and hey. I'm very excited because we got a great get. You know, Buzz, when you book someone who is really top of mind. There's nothing more valuable to a show like this than a good get. Want to get a good get, and he should be here any moment, I would think. We were expecting... No, uh, oh! Hello? Hello? Hello hey. there. Hey, how are you, Robbie? <laughs> hey, it's Physical Cliff, everybody. <laughs> Narrowly avoided you. Uh, nice, nice to see you, Oscar Buzz. Hey, great buddy. to have everybody. Nice to be with you, boys. How are you? It's Physical Cliff. Cliff, good to yeah. see you. Big night. Uh, big night for me. It's uh, you know, it's my thank you tour. Uh, doing a, you know a lot of a radio programs uh, going around the country, uh, saying thank you to everybody. Basically, it was a Why hell of a you... run, but uh, all good things must come to an end. Why are you saying thank you? You were universally hated, and everyone was talking about how great it is to avoid you. Is it great to be avoided? Now listen, let yeah. me tell you mm-hmm. something. Universally hated does not mean uh, one little thing when you're talking about popularity. Fame is fame. Mm, infamy right. is infamy. It's de- it, you look at this world. I mean, for God's sakes, Kim Kardashian's pregnant, okay? <laughs> you have anything to do with that? No. That was, <laughs> Can- that was Kanye. Who? <laughs> Kanye West. <laughs> He's very good. <laughs> and hey, can he? Of course he can. Look what happened to her. <laughs> He's more fertile than Mike O'Mara. <laughs> Fiscal Cliff. Did you yes, en- hello, Oscar. Hello there. Did you enjoy all the attention that was given to you this past month? Well, you know, there were good days and bad days, but mm-hmm. I'll tell you, uh, being in the news cycle every single waking hour of every single day is a very special experience for me. And I just want to say I'd like to thank the Academy, John Boehner, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, mm-hmm. Nancy Peluso, or whatever her name is, mm-hmm. and uh, the entire United States Congress for keeping me alive till two hours after New Year's. How would you like, hey, Cliff, how would you like yet another moment to shine in the sun? I sure would. Who are you brought to us by today? Thank you very much. The Mike O'Mara <laughs> Show is brought to you today by our VIP packages for right. 2013. Nice. Enhance your vip Yes, I did forget the opening sponsor. That's fine. That's what I do, Rob. That's fine. Yeah, we might as well start 2013 like we ended 2012 <laughs> with a royal colossal screw-up. Uh, that one's on Mike O'Mara. No. Fat, lazy, over new year Mike O'Mara. Yes, sir. Oh, hey, dear. Yippity, puppity, boo. What can I do for you, Buzz? You're raising your hand like you want to ask a question. No, I have no question for you yet until uh, you finish with the sponsor. Oh, the sponsor's done. Oh, okay. 2013 well, VIP then, packages, and I got a printer down here. Then I, then there I, you go. Then, <laughs> then, I, then I, then I do. That, I, that's great, and I do have a question for you because Congress didn't deal with certain issues. I hear you may actually be coming back in a month or two. Well, I have to ask you a question, Buzz sure. Burbank. Can what, I ask you a question? What would you like to ask, Cliff? How did you cut your face? Well, I, I, I cut was, his what? I had a, I cut my face. face. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there was, quite, I, there was uh, an accident before the show started. I, I had an itch, and I scratched it, and I actually tore the skin on my cheek. Were you using your a... coke nail? What, I mean, how did this happen? <laughs> yes, I was, was using my, I was using my coke nail. No, it wasn't a zit. It, it wasn't was a zit. Just... It wasn't a big, nasty New Year's Eve boil. No, it was just an itch. No, that's on my neck. <laughs> okay. Oh, you got a boil on your neck. Oh, yeah. I think that's a, that sure looks like a hickey to me, I can see on the camera. Hey, Clifford. Could, could be that. Clifford. Yes, uh, hello, Rob. Um, you know, everyone. Cliff Flavin. A lot of people. Mr. Were, Cliff, my friends call me. I know a lot of people are disappointed that Mr. Mike O'Mara is not here yet. I imagine he'll be here at the front of the show. But he predicted that Congress would not. You guys, it's not that fat, Dubba Goo. <laughs> so, Congress, everyone was saying Congress wouldn't get this resolved. And Mike said, he said, this will never pass. They're going to screw this up. And yet Congress pulled it out. What message do you have for Mike O'Mara? I think he should think first and act later, and perhaps stay away from the Krispy Kreme donuts. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. Anderson, is there a reason why your shoe is untied? Um. You see, on the kickball field, a screw up like that can put you in a wheelchair. You'll end up writing your name with a pencil tape to your head the rest of your life. Set a tent. Have a happy new year with Boss Radio. By itself, a basketball is just a round sack of air, like many of you. But in the hands of someone properly trained in its use and skilled in its art, this ball can do great things. Oates, I can hear you wheezing from here. Take a lap. Lose the asthma. To survive outside these walls, you need more than just math and science. The world does not stop for people who can spell fancy words or tell you the capital of Montana. Capital of Montana, Watson. Helena. Who cares? Take a lap. May we say have a wonderful day. Every day of a bright new year. You're late, you fairy. How you doing, Dad? 
All I do all day is watch Judge Joe Brown and myself. How the hell do you think I'm doing? Wait, you have a father? Yes, Farley, I'm not Jesus. Who is this genius? It's uh, Beverly's kid. Looks like it got a little retard in him. Are you simple, boy? Here's an old wish for the new year. Have a happy new one. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Buzz Burbank, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his couch, here's Mike. Live from the Cappy Fiber Studios, this is the Mike O'Mara Show. All the same for 2013. Yeah. We are downloaded more than 15. How many, ti- how many times have we been downloaded? 17 million? Over 17. Seven, nearly 17 oh, million. Nearly 17. Around Nearly. 17 million. Around 17 million times, and we are heard in 175,000 countries All of them. worldwide. Mm-hmm. Uh, today's show is uh, brought to you by the wonderful staff at TLC Laser Eye Center. TLC, their staff is friendly, the surgeons are experienced, and TLC's equipment is always state-of-the-art. The TLC has a lifetime commitment. It's huge, don't you know? Oh, huge. TLC has locations. All over the nation, if you move, you're covered. To schedule a free consultation and to see what you've been missing, call 877-TLC-2020. That's 877-TLC-2020. Or find TLC online at their new web address, tlcvision.com. That's tlcvision.com. And be sure to tell them you heard about TLC where? Here on the Michael Mara Show. Thank you, TLC Laser Eye Center. It is uh, Wednesday, Jan 2, 2020. 13. And I'm looking at my little sheet that I write for myself before I do this show. Yes. Have you no yellow and pad down there? I, You know, I might be changing. Oh. I might be, Don't go I changing. might be going off the yellow pad. Huh? Oh. Oh. Well, after three there short years, go. now that you have a working printer in your house. <laughs> true. Well, I, I got one down here that I set up myself. And you know, I've, uh, I've got so many resolutions to talk about. But wow. one, I mean, right away, as far as running out last night, realizing that down here in South Florida, I was printer-less. Oh, and no. I had to run out sixty nine dollars mm-hmm. for a brand new wireless printer. Is that a bargain That's or is pretty that amazing. a bargain? Pretty good, pretty I know good. that Oscar's mom would sell you one for fifty two. <laughs> now you know how uh, she has many both of them. with RJ and incidentally RJ one of one of his rare visits to the studio. Yes. Let's welcome yeah. him back. Yeah. RJ. Thank you, Mike. Nice thank to you have guys. you here, RJ. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, and thanks for helping me with the uh, setup last night uh, down here in beautiful, sunny South Florida, the location where, starting today, I will be working all of you guys to move to. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Excellent. How's the weather? It's, it's, uh, well, it's going to be 81 degrees today oh, and, wow. lots, and lots of sunshine. Mm, it's a beautiful day to play outdoors, throw the ball, fish, hunt. Go to baseball games. It's uh, your kind of place, Rob. How's the hunting? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I understand that over the vacation you bagged yourself a nine-point buck. Yeah, fantastic. And a panther. And uh, Well, you know what I've Wild seen down game. here since I've been here? You know what they have now uh, down in the uh, little lake system down here? Huh. They have otters. Otters. Ooh. Now, how, how cute are otters? Well, they extremely are. cute. You don't hunt those. But I think, so. Mike, that those are those deadly, rabid Florida otters that can kill you. They're so very, stay, very them, dangerous. Give them a lot of space. But you know what else they have down here that actually uh, somebody was telling me yesterday? I haven't seen it yet. Huh? But apparently he's he lives down here, and he's wild. A wild iguana. Ooh. Uh, now, I didn't you think you that was Central what... America or South America down uh, where well, Oscar lives? I think Oscar was things? on vacation in Florida and his iguana escaped, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. With, with global warming, actually some warmer weather animals are moving farther north now. Buzz has well, a you know, point. If you treat me well enough, uh, mm-hmm. maybe during this broadcast, my iguana might escape. God, I <laughs> hope not. Oh. Oh. Boo-hoo, boo. Uh, Try please, to keep that cage. Please, no. <laughs> On the uh, program today, gentlemen and ladies, uh, something I want to discuss uh, with Rob, is his Facebook addiction. I want to <laughs> I want to get his uh, impression of how he did, how he thinks he did. Okay. And I know we all follow Rob's post because Rob gets very excited. Mm. And when he gets excited, he goes to Facebook. I, I want to see how he thought he managed it. Uh, I'm back down here in the land of huge... You know that guy? Oh, yeah. I know oh, him. Yeah. The, the guy with the largest Kia dealership. And I'm giving him a free plug here. <laughs> Huge! Uh, we'd love to get him on the, on the air. His name is Billy Facillo. That's it. And this year, I've, done a, I've gone a little further with it, and I've researched the guy and found out all about him, and I don't like him anymore. Oh, oh really? Because no. uh, I remember it was one thick. year ago this very day, you came back with a huge bro crush on him. Yeah, I, he's no. He's, a, he's just a hog. What, really? He, yeah, he's, the, just, he's just greedy. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to own everything. I'm going to buy everything. I'm going to, uh, uh, uh. 
yeah. that's weird. So, He's an exception of, to the rule of most automobile dealers. And, and, yeah, how much how much weight does it carry to be the biggest Kia dealer? Yeah. You know, is uh, there, well, no, it, yeah. it's volume. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's I the number that. of Kia cars that uh, that he that he sells, and apparently he just decimates the competition down here. And he talks about the competition, yeah. which I which I think makes him a bully, and I don't like bullies, <laughs> and so that's why I don't I don't like. That. And I forget uh, what part of America does the Kia come from? Is it made in Detroit? I believe it's Korean, but I think they make some of them here. In the really? States. Not sure. Wow. Yeah, that's their bag. They make they make some of the parts here. Yeah. Some of the some of the just cars latches, here. just yes. like the American company. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Most uh, also Americans. On the today, uh, I have a wonderful story. <laughs> an altercation where you would not expect an altercation, really? not involving me. I was simply an observer, and you know, when somebody gets into a fight and I can just observe it, it's fun to watch. Did you get uh, involved at all? What's that? Did you get involved in the altercation at all? No. Just just uh, walking uh, walking away from it with uh, Carla Spectator. and laughing my ass off. That shows maturity, Mike. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, Rob? Mike? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. You look great. Mike, how are the old people down there? <laughs> <laughs> funny you mention that, Oscar Santana. It's funny you mention how the old, old people are down here because I am going to have a, I have a very significant criticism of not old women but mm. old men mm. and uh I, I i'm really i'm getting close to that age i mean i'm 20 years away where i'm going to be these people and maybe as uh, <laughs> rob's holding up 10 fingers <laughs> 10 years mike yeah maybe 10 maybe 10 now when you're com- six. when you complain about old men is do you hate it when they scratch their face and make themselves bleed <laughs> their their skin gets very thin you see well, and, is the, and then when you're uh, on the Hillary blood thinners on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. Buzz is approaching this zone, <laughs> and I might be able to enlighten him mm-hmm. as to how uh, behaviors to avoid to, to, to get yourself out of this. I really I would like study that. the elderly down here. Hey, I would like I'm, some tips. I'm around them constantly, and I have a tale of, uh, of two elderly people that I played golf with, and... One was absolutely um, uh, just magnificent, outstanding. I mm-hmm. mean, not only a physical specimen, but just the attitude and everything. And you're talking to Mr. Complain here. You're talking to negative, negative Johnny. That's me. I know right. that I'm a negative person. Mm-hmm. And I'm learning how I want to age down here. And I'll mm-hmm. get to that. Will second. you entertain a quick question about the elderly? Yes, yes, please. Go I right remember ahead. as a boy that you were old. I think it started, I'd say old started at about age 65. And I think that's changed now. Mind the Sorry, microphone, but- dear. <laughs> Mike. Mind the microphone. Hey, that was RJ's first laugh. <laughs> first, oh, you're keeping count. Thanks, Mike. The laugh of the show today is me when I clinked my glass. No, I, I was gr- laughing at Rob. Great to have you back. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. There it is for today. Um, what is that? Just a, just a few fingers to take the sh- make the shaking stop, Mike? <laughs> it's an adult beverage. I'm going drinking. I like to go to the top O of the mast. <laughs> <laughs> Did you steal that glass? Mast. Did, did you steal that glass? They've been in the house for like years. Maybe they came with the house. I think we stole them. I no. think we stole them. <laughs> probably, after a, probably. Like Florida drunk one night. Okay, mm-hmm. question. When do you think people are old now, and what is the old age in Florida? Is there more of a, uh, a gray area in Florida? You'll pardon the expression? Rob, I'm serious. I see people here that are 75 right. that uh, you would not think are old. It's so state I, of mind. I, but I think 75 has to be the cutoff age. Okay, no longer 65. Or as I uh, I like to as I like to call it, getting to high school graduation. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the race is on. Somebody. <laughs> I think I'm so proud of you, <laughs> Big valedictorian. What is your name? Anyway, um, <laughs> don't worry, Dad. We'll put it on your tombstone. <laughs> that was that was me doing an impression of me. So uh, also on the program today, I will share with you my favorite Facebook activity, and it's mm. something I plan to do. Not a whole bunch, but a couple more times in the year 2013 because it brought such unbridled joy. I think you guys might know what I'm talking about. Sure. Uh, and let me see. The most mellow New Year's Eve in my adult life. Oh. But I want to start today with the new T-shirt for 2013. A T-shirt that will say on the front of it simply, I'm Jack Cassidy. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Signs for it, different looks and uh, different uh, themes, mm-hmm. but really the slogan, the slug line is going to be, I'm Jack Cassidy. I love it. <laughs> it brings people a lot of joy, and I discovered that it brings people joy, right. and I'm happy about that. Have Very you popular. given any thought to the font? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I think the font should be something very old, queeny, and elegant. Something that suggests arsenic and old lace, don't you think? This is the only thought I had. And I know that, uh, you know, some of us always say we do too many black T-shirts. But I think this warrants perhaps a black T-shirt mm. with white lettering and a splash of red. And what I was thinking was this, this, is, my, my, this is my queenie t <laughs> This is a queenie T-shirt. All right, but for I, everyone, Mark, I know you're taking mental I, notes. I Remember, am. the word was a splash of red. Okay. Jack Cassidy with just a cigarette in a cigarette holder with the red tip and a curl. <laughs> and a curl of smoke. A curl of smoke. I think it sounds great. <laughs> is he there? Is he not there? We have lost. Oh, no, we lost him on the FaceTime and the Skype. Hmm. <laughs> He'll be very happy. Well, we'll oh, give him a call boy. back. Let's do that. We'll redial, Mike. And uh, what we're looking for is a, uh, a splash of red, Mark. Well, there's a splash of red uh, inside of his uh, forehead right now as the, the blood rose straight to his head as he's probably fired up. <laughs> he was so happy when things began. <laughs> things yeah. were going very well. I like the idea of the cigarette of the cigarette holder with the red glow. Love though. it. It'll be very, it. very popular. He's back on him. the face. Look at his face. I see him now. Everybody, face. Everybody there's everybody a little splash of red in his the face right now. you're trying to reach... Oh, he's currently us. unavailable. Oh, here we go. Mike? Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey. You're back. Hello Welcome again. Back. You're back, baby. Are you what back happened? for a splash of red? <laughs> uh, so so uh, it, now everything seems to be going haywire down here. So, no, right, I, I think it should be okay. Can you hear me okay? We Absolutely. Yes, very well. Great. All right. Uh, so anyway, where was I? We were talking splash about the uh, splash of color. Right. All that work we did before the show, boys, and now everything, uh, it seems 2013 is starting out a little sketchy. <laughs> well, no, we made it at least uh, 16 minutes in without any problem. I think that's that pretty strong. Technical uh, glitches at all, but uh, a little frustrating with that. Uh, so that's what I'm picturing. I'm picturing just a little splash of color, mm -hmm. and uh, it, should be, it should be wonderful. I'm looking forward to that. So, Are you I looking for people I to submit designs? Um, I, I said that on Facebook, and I, I don't mind uh, you know having that happen this time around also. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Hello good again. to see you again. And uh, so that's my vision. My vision was just sim simplicity mm -hmm. with a tiny splash of color. Ha-ha, <laughs> Jack Cassidy. You see, and you and I, we have a different vision then, because what I was thinking of was not a black T-shirt, but more something fitted and in lace. <laughs> Be serious. This is like you with commercials too. No, we're trying to feed our families here, and you don't even you don't have a care in the world. We could sell a half a T-shirt, and Rob would be like, "Carrie, Carrie got it for a raise." What? And, I, you know, I, and you know, I was talking to Oscar over the break, and you know, Oscar and I are trying to build this thing so that we can all like improve. You would be fine. You would be fine. <laughs> you got it in friggin' popsicle sticks. You'd Mike, be okay. Mike, if you recall, this is also the man that said he was going to lay off Facebook. I said I was going to yeah. watch it. I was going to try to moderate you know it. It's it's a good time to get back to this uh, this topic, right? Because Rob, I think you caught. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I want to hear it from you. I think you caught yourself after a while. But when you first started, when you started getting into that vacation mode, yes, and then right around the wrestling thing where you and mm. that was kind of sweet, and you were so yeah. I'm going to give you a free pass on the wrestling. Thank you. I felt that it was it was necessary to sort of capture the moment because Robert no, were, was having but a it was great joy. time. It was your joy as a father, and I can relate to it. you. You were it was unbridled. That one post you put with your kid. That, that's my kind of face. I like those kind of Facebook posts. I like that. What I don't like are every single waking detail of certain people's lives <laughs> that have to be put on there. And What detail you, troubled you the most? Anything come to mind? You posted so many times. You, you lost control of your addiction so totally <laughs> on this holiday. You were all over Facebook. Well, you know, I mean, it wasn't it, just it, the it Facebook. Your Facebook. It wasn't just the Facebook addiction, Mike. It was uh, heavy was drinking. It, it was heavy drinking. <laughs> to a point where Carrie says... You're drinking a lot. Oh. I said, yeah, well, yeah. It's vacation. She says, make sure it's just vacation. I said, I'm Rob Spiewak, and this is my liver. That's <laughs> 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 It's great when the buttons are close. Well, uh, but uh, so I observed that for you, and I it was just uh, it, it seemed like you were you know little details. I'm trying to think of what the I, I didn't mind. I remember the positive, and I forget the negative. The ones that that's, I didn't. That's couple, you all over. That's me. That's the way I think. Yes, Oscar. Uh, this activity was uh, un an unprecedented territory because I had uh, two, two of our friends actually come to me and say, is everything okay with Rob? Because I'm thinking of taking him off my favorites on oh, Facebook because wow. he's clogging up my feed. The news feed, uh, yes. Rob, when I went to my news feed at one point, I had four posts from Rob, one from Horny Bob Spiewak, mm -hmm. and one from Carrie in my top 20 uh of my top 20. You had a very Spiewak Christmas. You're very lucky. And think about this, Mike. 
we, yes. uh, most of us here do, I mean, I, I, at least I don't on my phone. Hold on, let me just interrupt for one second. What's about to happen, if you're <laughs> keeping track at home, Oscar is going to very subtly make himself look really good mm -hmm. while making right? me look bad. No, now go ahead. no, no. But he'll is, do it subtly, so this, be careful. This is Take a away, wrong Oscar. topic here <laughs> great boy, where you, essentially for myself, when I go to my Facebook page, I see what happened two or three hours later when I'm logging on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, most people have uh, notifications on their phone. So if you're friends with Rob Spiewak and you have a notification, he's on your favorites, mm -hmm. all you're going to be doing is getting text messages of his useless rants and, and, yeah. and his thoughts. So, and by the way, Oscar doesn't do this, so Oscar's hey, better to, than me. I, since we're Skyping this, can I go to my computer and go to Facebook and check it out? You can. Probably, yeah. You can. Yeah. Let's find out. Another, another uh, issue that was brought up to me is that a listener br came to me and said, I've seen uh, Rob. This was on New Year's Eve. Okay. Uh, th I've seen Rob's activity on Facebook. I thought that his New Year's resolution was to spend more time with his family and less time online. Mm -hmm. That's true, but that was really lived technically on. that was technically 2012. That yeah, that but, but I, I yeah. and that was before he was home confined with his family. That is true. I spent a lot I, of time with my family. I know me. that's your outlet, and I look. I think that it's great. It's great promotion for the show. I think that it's awesome that you're out well, there. See, and you're now doing there's what my point. Do. It's not necessarily great promotion for the show <laughs> there are certain of us hello thank you very me uh -huh. and, uh, there's certain of us that actually really think everything is to promote the show that's kind of what i do yes that's kind of what i do mm -hmm. then there are people that are just like oh, hi mob well <laughs> yeah like like mike for example uh, yesterday at 1 16 he says it's after 1 p.m time to put on some pants oh happy new year mob yeah yeah. Well, it was yeah, time to put on some pants. Happy New Year, Mob. That's like that's to his that's his people. That's where he that's where he that's where that's where you that's a very significant swim in Lake Me. When Don't you point to mob. so much because your your <laughs> hand gets really uh, big in the uh, thing. It's scary. Don't do that. It's upsetting. Were you, were you embarrassed at all? <laughs> embarrassed? But once your 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 haze, the alcohol haze goes away, and you look at your feed, you're like, holy yes, I no, just you know, did myself. I haven't been embarrassed in a long time. Okay. I think I keep hey, it. Is Rob Radio World Broadcast Headquarters? Is that a new website? No. Is it's, that a new Facebook page? No. Or is that old? You ask that every year. Yeah. <laughs> but but see, it pops up every, every year. year. Yeah. <laughs> that's essentially that's my check in at my house, Mike. But I don't want to say I'm at my house. It sounds more big if I say it yeah. that way. People now, there's a wonderful picture on his on his Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful profile p picture of uh, of the, the his two parents who he drove apart. <laughs> oh my God! I Actually, Mike, uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm the reason they got married. <laughs> <laughs> So really both. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I am the ingress and the egress, the yin and the yang. No, and I had a great profile treat. picture. His profile picture is his uh -huh. wonderful uh, wait not ad uh -huh. that, uh, that that he took a picture of and uh, and froze up there. So that that's hysterical. Scary that makes Rob. me. Yeah, and I got to show you know, and I had the pleasure of showing that to you and your father in law, which I was very pleased to do on uh, Christmas Eve. Yeah, my bu my buddy Peter and I we ventured out to see uh, Rob, and we went out to the world broadcast headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> You looked fantastic. It was a very nice, unexpected Christmas Eve visit. Yeah, I visited with Rob uh, over the holiday. I forgot what the reason was. I you needed a video. I needed a video of the uh, the Reno show, mm -hmm. and I wanted to give it to my friend Pete, and that's uh, that's what I got. Now, there are a lot of other people on your Facebook page, so it's tough to find your your posts here. You have to go deep into He's it, but we're popular. not in that holiday mode either. It's very busy, very busy. But, yeah, as far as the resolution, I think yes. since today? yesterday. No, I think since yesterday I've been pretty good mm -hmm. at it. Okay. And, uh, well, take us through, uh, seriously, take us through your, um, your, I guess, the, the difference I like, between... Can I just say one thing, yes. Oscar? I like when Carrie communicates with you on Facebook. I do, too. Are you <laughs> like kidding? It's better than talking Leesburg. to her. Dad... What's with you cussing tonight? Oh, that was that was is that actually her father or is she? But it's it's directed to you, so it must be you. No, that was a quote from my son on New Year's Eve. Oh, and she was putting it in there, so I remembered that he actually said it. <laughs> I might have said a few words that you're not supposed to say in front of your children. Uh -huh. Rob, did you cuss on New Year's Eve. Did you stay up late on New Year's Eve? Yeah, I did. I didn't think I would, but I did. I watched a lot of Gilligan's Island. I watched the Ryan Seacrest show, and uh, apparently I fell asleep shaped like a C on the couch. <laughs> That's what I was told. What has changed between uh, 2012 and 2013, your Facebook activity? Well, day one. Now that we are 24 days in, I have, I did this morning. You mean 24 hours? 24 hours, days. Seems like days. <laughs> It's an eternity for him. I uh, went and in. Congratulations to Rob Spiewak, first one to get his balls busted of 2013. <laughs> nice. And not the last. That's fabulous. I do believe that uh, I did birthdays this morning, mm -hmm. uh, skimmed around, uh, said something to my buddy Brad, and that might have been it for today. So, yeah. Well, we're, in, we're now in effective 
more holding off on Facebook. And I think now also here's a new, it's not too late to make a resolution. Is it Mike? No, not at all. My resolution. I, I'm going to make them. I think you can make them within the month of January. That's I the think way I would I'm going to end every post with the show's website. Oh, that'd be great. Mm. That would be, that would be yeah, a, a, a very, wrong. very nice. And that's that what I will be do. A happy gift yes. to me. Happy new year, Mike. <laughs> I will <laughs> do that. I don't like your hat. <laughs> nice that hat, hat is horrific. It really is. That is is it a zebra Florida hat? Florida redneck hat. Thank you very much. I think we've, that. It's a gator's hat. It's a zebra hat? It's a gator's hat. I think we found the it's iguana. It's a gator's hat. That's yep. right, Oscar. It's a Florida gator's Florida gator's, gator's. But what is right, it? I'm still, I'm still looking at his Facebook page. It's uh, when you wade into Rob Spiewak's Facebook yeah. page. It is it literally. It's it's like falling through the looking glass. This is ridiculous. <laughs> well, I should invite you not to do it then, because it never brings you pleasure. Oh, here's a good one. This is Rob writing about something he could care less about. Okay. Congrats to the Washington Redskins, the only NFL team to ever fire me. Makes it about me. Yeah. Makes it about him. Of course. Uh, on their victory, start measuring your fingers. For rings, it's bowl time. That's right. Because, Mike, I love sports. It's not. If you're a real NFL fan, it's playoff. Time. Really? Do you think maybe there's a trace of sarcasm, Mike? If it's bowl time, it's a. See, if you do. Do you think there is a chance, a glimmer of a chance, that there was a trace of sarcasm because I'm still pissed that they fired me? I understand. He's I just understand. baiting. I, you know, I've got a guy a that I went to, went to a Christmas party on December 21st. My good friend and attorney, Mr. Decio, right. has uh, many Redskins that come to his house, past and present. And I was chatting up a, uh, a new friend who we're going to get on the show, Nick Sunberg, who is the uh, long snapper for the Washington Redskins. And I'm excited about that. So I'm always conflicted with the Redskins. Everybody knows I was raised a Giants fan. Mm -hmm. And then I'm talking to these guys mm -hmm. that are going up to Philadelphia for a game the next day. And I'm talking to Kedrick Golson also. And so, and they're so nice. They're super nice. And then I sit down to watch the game. Mm -hmm. And I watch the game and I see Lil Danny. Right. Lil yeah. Dan Snyder up in the owner's box. And I just, and, and all the goodwill nah. for the Indian and gold slowly gets sucked out of me. And did you ever see posts like you did on Facebook? The night the Redskins, the long suffering Redskins faithful, had their victory over Dallas. They they were they were they were out of control. People that was nuts. almost enough to make me really quit Facebook. Almost. Yeah. It was HTTR, and uh, you know mm -hmm. it was all. Over. But you know what? Being a Red uh, Red Sox fan and knowing what a long drought is like, not nearly the kind of drought we as Redskins uh, Red Sox fans had. But you've got these fans that have been suffering. They care so much. It's the only team people really care about. Mm -hmm. in Washington, they can lie all they want about the fact that they're big Nationals fans or they're big uh, Capitals fans. But the fact is, you know this, Rob. You know this, Oscar. You know this, Buzz. This is a one-team town. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Redskins. And they went out of their minds when they beat uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. And it was I, I, didn't re I didn't really care, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> How you didn't respond when I said that Tony Romo has a vagina. How I come you didn't respond? To that text what was we were you like uh you know getting a, a knobber at the time no i actually i think i had uh fallen asleep at that point really yeah see i thought you were totally nocturnal i thought when it was after uh the hour of 11 o'clock what are you uh, I, I i was i was exhausted i've been uh on the road a lot this uh holiday season so i think i just passed out that's right you were up in new york right apparently mike's got a guest oh do we have a guest a special guest He's dragging into the frame here come on in who do we Shimmy have? Here? On. There, there she is. She is. Big Gators fan. Hey, oh, there she is. Hey now. This is O'Mara. <laughs> Don't touch the Gators, sir. All three of my favorite O'Mara's right there. Uh, Carl, we had to bump the uh, speed of the uh, cable modem here up to fifty dollars a month. I just thought I'd let you know that. Okay, isn't she nice? Yeah, you know what I like nice. is that you explained it not by the speed, but by the cost. Dollars. <laughs> It's a dollar per megabyte. Yeah, we upped it by fifty dollars. Oh, it must be very fast then. <laughs> now to you fifty dollars a month faster. <laughs> so, Mark, you are the resident uh, super deluxe Redskins fan. Yes. Uh, did I articulate it at all accurately about the way people in D.C. are feeling right now? Yeah, absolutely. I I I couldn't believe. I I still can't believe that they are actually NFC East champions. Like, wow, it, it, you're right. It, you called it though. It's really exciting. It's nice. You're right because of the drought. It's really nice to see them back on top for once. Yeah, we started late, honey. Honey, I'm doing a show. I know we're down here. <laughs> well, is, it, is, it, is it pool time? She wants to get her lunch on. That's what she wants to ah, do. Well, yes. well, she had the car already. Why doesn't she just help herself? <laughs> she <wants> to... <laughs> I'm sure there are many fine restaurants within driving distance to Casa de Omera South.
Well, I am happy uh, for the Redskins fans. I can't, you can't not be happy for them. However, there is, in the average NFL fan, and I think Mark will back me up on this, there is a hatefulness uh, with NFL fans. They can't just say, I feel so great, I'm having a great day. There were plenty of those. You know, right. this is like... This is like the best birthday present I could ever got, get. And then you've got the, the ones that say, what a great game by the Redskins. The Cowboys can S a D. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> yeah. Right words. And there's this hatefulness. But I guess it, is that because it's Dallas or is yeah. that just the way? I think it is. I think, you know, Dallas fans are, are traditionally arrogant. And I think it's just uh, the effect of a long, bitter rivalry. Well, I, right, let's go around the room. And I want honesty here. Who watched the entire Dallas game? Rob, did you watch the entire Dallas Redskins game that uh, was for for all the marbles? I will shock you. I watched the entire second half. (laughs) (laughs) You hoodwinked me. I did. There was a little bit of skullduggery, and I schnookered you. (laughs) Oscar Santana, did you uh, watch the entire game? Uh, The one great thing about a winning product is all uh, all, all the people that were fans have come back, and my father actually called me and said, I, are you watching the game today? And I said, uh, hello, who's this? And they said, it's your father. And I said, dad, uh, you don't even, I was like, oh, you don't even care about the rest of You wrote them off years ago. Right. And he's like, I heard they're doing good. <laughs> so I actually, I was in a conundrum because I said, what am I going to do with my dad? I already had made plans uh, with Todd and our friends to go over Todd's to watch the game. And, right. be, and because I'm the coolest son ever, I, oh, invi- I invited my dad along and he came along and had a great time. That's very nice. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Buzz, do I need to even ask you? Oh, I, let's go through the exercise. I, uh, I, man, I, managed, <laughs> I managed to avoid it entirely. There you go. Yeah. Thank you very much. You bet. Uh, it was, uh, so hail to the Redskins. Congratulations on uh, really an incredible season. To come back from not even a chance of making the playoffs to win the division, you got to give them a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Tony Romo, I believe, is one of the worst big-game quarterbacks yes. I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely. Well, I mean, every single uh, RJ. Would you agree with that? That Tony Romo, when it choke. comes to the game, hasn't he cemented his reputation now? He has as, done it so many times in his career. It's horrible. Yes, it's really. It's every time. I mean, he brings his team back from the brink, and then he has the big game on the national stage, and he goes ah, in the playoffs. He did it. He choked. He fell a yard short of the end zone. You know. It's terrible. So anyway, that's uh, that's our little football talk. We're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, we haven't even covered what we did for New Year's, our New Year's resolutions. My, uh, But when I, I come back, I have to share with you my little altercation oh, story good. that oh. I found at a local shopping mall right down here in South Florida. Yeah. We'll be right show.com if we haven't said it happy new year we hope you had a wonderful new year and the second part of our program is brought to you by the good people at wait not now this is the time of the year for resolutions everybody makes them uh it's the time to make a resolution and make a commitment if you're serious about losing weight you're ready to succeed with wait not one of my great joys over the uh, vacation was to see rob's commercial where you saw the before and the after and you can be just like rob if you get involved with rate wait not and you can do it fast and you can do it safely you're a big fan rob Yo, but to, in my defense if you do lose weight you don't look mean and mad like i do in the commercial <laughs> okay you're actually going to smile all the time because you're going to feel great yeah the commercial broke and uh my entire family was first cheering that i looked that way and then laughing because i tried to look tough uh <laughs> but it was a very big honor to be on television and yeah you can do it if you just get the program and stick to it the weight will fall off at an alarming rate yeah the, the commitment was made by mr spiewak he called wait not he took personal responsibility for his success now rob and wait not are challenging you to make the same commitment wait not's commitment is to help you lose weight fast and in a healthy way that includes real food no packaged meals and no shakes what you learn helps everyone in your family and teaches you and them how to eat right your entire life and because wait not works fast it's a better value than programs that take much longer it's time to look better feel better and be better call 855 wait not that's 855-934-4486 or visit waitnot.com wait not show us what you're made of baby yeah, yeah uh, baby yeah do it uh. back to the show so uh <laughs> we are we're in a uh, little shopping mall down here in south florida and uh i think we were coming away from having i had dinner with my niece and his uh, his lovely bride his brand new bride nephew Sarah. then 
my nephew, my nephew uh, Mike and uh, and his bride Sarah, and uh, we had a wonderful dinner with them. And I hadn't seen him when I went to his wedding. There were so many people there. You know what it's like when there's a groom and a bride. You don't get a chance to have any really quality time with them. Right. So uh, he's my little guy. This is my this is my nephew. I, I love him to death. And it was so cool to finally have a sit down. And we had just a great time. And we're walking away. They were going to their car, and we're going to ours, and we're walking down the street. And suddenly I see this guy that had to be 80. And this guy is screaming at this car who, who's parked. Now, the guy in the car seems to be about 40, 45 okay. years old. And the guy is going, F you, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I kind of stop in our tracks. And, and the guy in the car goes, suck you. you know, and it's oh. just all these expletives. And the only thing I can determine is this happened while the guy was <laughs> walking his toy poodle. Of course. Across the street. The 80-year-old is walking the toy poodle? Well, he's got this dog on the end of this leech who's straining to get away because the owner is raising his voice. And this guy's going, <laughs> he's got a toy poodle on a leash, which really, if you want to have some, a, a penis shrinking activity. <laughs> right. When I walk Frankie around the neighborhood, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. You walk a dog like that, it's like you saying, I've lost my penis. <laughs> and I... He's got a poodle on the end of his leash, and he's going, "I'll kick your ass! Come back! I'll kick your ass!" And it was just highly entertaining. And I said, "Hey, everybody's in a good mood in Florida." Is there no? Is there any chance the poodle was a service dog? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that guy was blind. Could be. But I, you know, the thing that was funny about it is, uh, you, I have noticed we drive down here every year, and I have noticed uh, even on the drive. And being down here, even though you're supposed to be in a much nicer area and everybody's on, you know, most people that are down here uh, aren't lucky like me where they can work down here. They're on vacation. Right. You would think be in a state of euphoria. And you see these people and there's a, like everywhere else in the United States, there's a bit of a tampon factor down here. I have noticed that with the <laughs> drive. I have noticed that with the, the elderly people as well. And it just seems like, I don't know what it was like uh, back home because I, well, I was there through Christmas Day. But uh, I don't know. Did you notice any with the recession in the fiscal cliff? Was there any appreciable lack of joy during the holiday season? I, I know saw, there was plenty of joy at the Speedway. I saw some fussiness like out and about in stores and stuff. But also because I was not, because I am, as you know, Father Christmas. Every time I opened a door or helped an elderly person with a package, they were very warm and receptive. How about you guys? How about did you? Uh, you know, I, I noticed something spe specific that when we shopped around here, and I did uh, most all of my shopping on Amazon uh, through the Mike O'Mara show, so you can't go wrong. Yes, yeah, everyone should. Very good. Uh, very good. But I will say that the, New Year's the, people. Yeah, the customer service uh, that is the D.C. area, I think it, it's really regional because we when I went out in Pittsburgh with my sister for some last-minute gifts that she needed to pick up, the people were friendly. They were kind. They were nice. They took us to our aisles. I, it just doesn't happen anymore. I, I found store clerks to be pretty friendly here because business is down. Nobody was really spending any money, so they were really glad to see anybody who came in the store. And you would have liked it, Mike, because the traffic has been really light, at least until today, uh, while everybody was off work. Uh, so there, you know, there weren't a lot of disagreeable tra people in traffic either. I had one road rage incident on my way driving down. It was uh, now late you left on Christmas Day. What time? Uh, about uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, nine hours uh, down to Savannah, Georgia, and then we do another seven the next day, seven, seven and mm -hmm. a half hours, and we're fine till we got south of Tampa, and what I noticed, and, and Carla and I both noticed this, we shared a lot of the driving, she did uh, uh, most of the driving on the first leg, and I, uh, I did a good chunk of it on the second, she drives a lot, and it's great, she loves to, and I lo love to let her do it, but as I'm driving, I noticed uh, more people cutting me off, more people cutting me off on a regular basis, mm -hmm. And the, the last straw for me was a lady that, uh, you know, we're going 75, 80 miles an hour, and this massive SUV filled with people, like grandpa, mom, dad, the kids, but, my, you know, mom's driving, and she almost took the front of my bumper off. And this oh, is after wow. rock on my windshield, too, that split the uh, very mm. top of my, my windshield. So I'm not oh. in a good mood to start with. So I get in the right lane, and I'm, it's Johnny Road Rage again, and I'm going to mm. cut her off. So I cut her off. Well, oh, uh, Katie, bar the door. <laughs> Out of her mind. And you know when you cut somebody off and then you get a little distance between them, but you know that their, their quest, that they're going to kill themselves. 
to catch up to you again. Oh, they're mm-hmm. a quarter mile back uh, formulating a battle plan. Right. It's not that they're hanging back. They're just ready to attack. Of this lovely, uh, slightly overweight family from Ohio. <laughs> but it's desperately, and I, you know, and I look at it, too, because I'm going, at this point, we're in two lanes of traffic on Route 75 in South Florida, and it's starting to uh, get a little bit dicey, and you can't really make up a lot of ground. There are just too many cars there. But lo and behold, this lady finally catches up to me. And at this time, I'm in the middle lane, and uh, I'm over it. I'm like, Chilling. Yeah, let her have her fun. So she, pull- <laughs> she pulls up next to me. But she doesn't pull up to the, uh, you know, to the driver's side. She pulls into the second row. Hmm. And sitting in back of her, obviously her husband, John Candy, uh, <laughs> leans across his two kids because he's such a classy individual. Uh, he rolls down his window, and he starts uh, yell, yelling, F you, F you, F you. And I'm like, yeah. And so hmm. I roll down the window. And I thought I was very kind. I said, uh, I'll say it in the nicest possible way. Do you want a piece of me, tough guy? Oh, my God. oh God, while you're driving. While you're driving? I just said, hey, you're a, t- a tough guy. And it looked like Grandpa was in the front. Well, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm, he's right next to me, and he's screaming this at me. And I'm like, you want some of this, tough guy? Do <laughs> 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 anything? And we looked in the front seat, and in the front seat, Grandpa is laughing. So either amused at what the, the whole thing or grandpa's like going yeah you tell him boy and then uh they they went up ahead of me like uh 20 car lengths and we never saw him again so <laughs> little, just i i have to be honest i'm not proud of it but you know uh, if he rolls down the window and he wants to say something and he wants to chat with me i'm gonna give him that satisfaction i'm gonna give him that effing satisfaction how does carla deal with you screaming at fat people was mad at these people. These people were so obnoxious and so so rude and really so bad at driving. Dangerous there that uh, they they deserved a piece of mind. Well, it's the holidays. Yeah, Mike. Do you remember the last time uh, you asked someone if they wanted a piece of you? What happened? I believe I blew my knee out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're lucky to be alive. Your rehabilitation, and I'm here to say that uh, it's completely healed. Oh, and I'm very happy, but my foot hurts now. What's great, though, is that person did get a piece of you, and you got a piece in return, but it was from a cadaver. <laughs> it was, but, I, you know, it's, it's a long rehab, but when you're finally able to get around better, it's nice to be in, a, in, in fun and sun. You hit That's the all. egg yesterday, right? I did hit the egg yesterday with a score of 86. Ladies Nicely done. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Well, made to go, Mr. Palmer. Got a lot of. Uh, we haven't covered anything. I want to get tomorrow on the show to all of your Christmases mm-hmm. and New Year's, so be prepared to talk about that. But I had to share with you before we go to break because you got to get Rob's audio vault on the joy, one of the great joys of South Florida. Okay. And I this to all of you, South Florida at their Costco uh-huh. has liquor stores. Ooh. I have been searching for the holy <laughs> long time. I give you Kirkland premium vodka. Wow. wow. Now, that bottle looks mostly full. Have you had any of it yet? Not been opened. I'm going to bring it home with me. Uh, it's the size of an oxygen tank. It's huge. How much, how much does that set a Costco member back, Mr. Romero? $7. How much? Say it again because you, you dropped for just a second. $7. And am I dropping out Thir- regularly? $37. $37, did you say? $7. Wow. Is the connection okay? Are we doing okay with it? We're Are fine. We... It's just sometimes when we overlap talking, there's just a, a slight drop. But $37 for two gallons of vodka is quite a deal. Remarkably clean. How much is it? Let me see. It's uh, 1.75 liters. Well, what we like to in the business like to call a pull. You bought a pull of vodka for $37. Well, it's a jug handle. It's a jug <laughs> handle volume, but I don't see the handle. It is a product of... Uh, there, there's, there it is. Mm-hmm. A product of France... Bottled uh, in, the, I think, the same place that Grey Goose is bottled. Probably. And I can't imagine that Costco would actually have their own French distillery. I bet you that is Grey Goose vodka. I'm sure. I bet you that's Grey Goose vodka in a Costco bottle. Is it glass or plastic? It's, gla- it's, it's unbelievably, like, high-quality crystal. <laughs> it's, not, it's not crystal. <laughs> can't see it over the FaceTime, but I will tell you, if you are here, this is a magnificent product. It's beautiful. I- it's a beautiful bottle. Hey, how much would you pay if this was like regular great use? You'd pay like seventy-five dollars. Seventy-nine, I Easily. think. Easily, mm-hmm. yeah. I, but I think that the prod, the proof, Mike, would be in the tasting. How about a little sample? I used to get excited about this stuff, Oscar. I used to, but I can't unfortunately anymore. I tried smoking weed; it didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you're not doing it right. Yeah. Did you? Did, is there a Costco? Is there a Costco blended whiskey as well? 
Uh, I don't think so. I don't think this was the product. And there are two levels of it. He said, uh, the guy said, are you going to mix it with stuff? I said, no, I like a little soda water with a little lime, but I don't like to really mix it with any. Well, then you want the good stuff. This is the good stuff. Uh-huh. Try this. And it was like $34. It was well, phenomenal. I think you really should probably take a small sample right now for the benefit of the listener. I'm not going to open it. It's like I got a cork and everything. So Just I don't do it. Come on, man. Drink. I mean, my, my goal, one of my resolutions for 2013 is to have less hangovers. Okay, you, not you, drink less, just less hangovers. Yeah, you want a piece of us? <laughs> Take a shot. Less hangovers mean less drinking, Rob. Or smarter drinking, Mike. Right. I mean, when we have our Super Bowl party at Jimmy's, that, that I said that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come back get to anything today that's uh that's the way first shows are uh tomorrow on the program we'll get to everything i was supposed to talk about today take a break come back with rob and his magic audio vault right here on the michael barrett show <laughs> show.com and i'll say it again happy new year everybody we are delighted to have you back with us for 2013 many many good things coming uh including our debut back on the washington airwaves on january 14th yeah. wtnt that is fm 102.9 and am 730 and we start that 7 to 9 p.m monday through friday on wtnt so tell your friends in washington dc to go listen to turn us on at night you can hear this show you can listen to the podcast go back and listen to it in your car at night who doesn't want to do that it's fantastic a lot of people say you need to listen to the show twice to catch all the subtleties i know i do <laughs> no i think we i'm ass i think we can be subtle i think we have a light touch occasionally <laughs> i agree uh this segment Rob's Magic Audio Vault is brought to you by Smart Smoke, the premium e-cigarette. Smart Smoke has a, I'm sorry, Smart Smoke. Who? <laughs> That's the nicotine you crave. But without tar, odor, secondhand smoke, or carcinogens, with same-day shipping and a money-back guarantee, Smart Smoke is the smarter alternative to tobacco, and it costs 80% less than traditional tobacco products. If you're a cigar lover, try the Belvedere. Yes, it lasts as long as six double Coronas to see all the styles and flavors and strengths and to order refills. Just click the Smart Smoke ad on our website. Let me ask you before we open the audio vault. Yes. Technically, on your end, I, I, this is the only way I can do it, fellas, because I get paranoid about it. Everything going okay? We had that one dropout where everything kind of crashed for a second there, but so far, so good? You sound terrific. The only thing is we have to endeavor, as we have to in real life, not to talk over each other. And that's when it uh, seems to drop out a little bit? Just right? a touch, just a touch, but right. I think we sound pretty and, good. And I have some solutions to that I want to try after the show. Okay, and uh, but if you guys talk over each other, it's okay. It's just when I talk over you or you talk over me, yeah. that that that's correct. Go ahead, over. <laughs> <laughs> the audio vault over. The audio vault has not yet even begun because you haven't opened the thing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, a few results. Uh, when I asked for requests for favorite tapes from the year, a couple more trickled in over the holidays, and I'd want to get them in because people mm-hmm. stop it. You're not really drinking the vodka, <laughs> Mike. Do you remember the name Sweet Brown? Sweet Georgia Brown. No, no, Sweet Brown. Sweet Brown, the one that uh, Hugh Grant got the uh, Hummer from? No, Sweet Brown is this lady. I think you'll remember her. This was a request. She is, thank God she survived a fire in Oklahoma City, Mike. Well, I woke up to go get me a cold pop. And then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. <laughs> then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. I ran for my life. And then the smoke got me. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> and also because we don't want to, uh, you know, leave them wanting more. Here is the Sweet Brown Hall & Oates remix, Mike. Well, I woke up to go get me a cold pop. And then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Ain't nobody got time for that. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. Ain't nobody got time for that. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Ain't nobody got time for that. Got time for that, Jesus. Ain't nobody got time for that. And it's such a pleasure for me. I don't know, really, when we play this stuff here. I know what we all like, but I don't know what the listeners like. And I got right. like a dozen requests for that, so there you go. A bit of a stretch. You know, they kind of shoehorned it into the into the music, which they do occasionally. But the strength of the tape, I think, is what makes that work. Mm-hmm. Another request. A big birthday this year, Mike, for Mr. Stephen Hawking. Do you remember how old he is? 
God. You're gonna, yeah. Do you remember how old he is? No, I don't, Rob. I he don't turned 70, and we have some exclusive tape from Stephen Hawking's birthday party. This also fi- by request. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stephen. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> so, best wishes. Rob- you, you, there's a there's a cold place in hell for you. Yeah, well, you know what? As long as it's cool, I'd prefer it to being hot. But, you know, it's not like I played a tape of Stephen Hawking singing, because that might be way over the line, Mike. You like the B-52s? Oh, sure. Yeah. We were at a party. His dear luck fell in the day. Someone reached him and grabbed it. It was a rock lobster. Rock Lobster. Now that's sort of a classic song for Stephen Hawking to sing, Mike. Yeah. Rock, Rock Lobster. But he also <laughs> occasionally, he can skew current. You know, he can do something newer. Uh, sure. Take me by the tongue and I'll know you. Uh, kiss me till you're drunk and I'll show you all the move like Jagger. I got the moves like uh-huh. Jagger. I've got the move, move, move. That's awesome. Like Jagger. <laughs> and that's funny because he really doesn't move that much at all. All right, I have a question for you. Yes. It seems to me that Stephen Hawking had a bit of a different tone in several of those. That's not all Stephen Hawking. None of it is. <laughs> <laughs> but those, we're just playing the request, Mike. Um, oh, did you hear the bad news? It's very sad, really. I, I'll go to the tape from the Today Show that one of your favorite, uh, one of your favorite artists is retiring his biggest song. Aside from some previously scheduled promotional gigs overseas, Psy is hanging Gangnam Style up. Singer told MTV News, quote, In America, I need a new single because Gangnam Style got too popular. Too popular is quite the understatement and not a bad problem to have. The song has been viewed over one billion times on YouTube. The first clip ever to surpass the one. The one billion mark. Mike, what will you do for Korean pop if Psy retires Gangnam Style? You know, uh, I think that th- this guy has lingered longer than anybody expected him to linger. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you're seeing him everywhere. And uh, I-, I don't know. It- 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 I put it right up with a, a sitcom star that gets, gets really a tremendous amount of notoriety for that one role. And they want to disavow it. And it's the same thing with this douche. You know, he wants to, uh, hey, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm like, yeah, screw you. You got, you got this fame. You slammed the United States of America 20 years ago or whenever you were, you know, doing that when that was popular for the moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the guy's a bit of a hump. So I hope he goes away and goes away quietly. How are There's you gonna my feel, take on Psy. How are you going to feel if you're the guy that buys tickets to see a Psy concert? And by the way, I think a few are still available. And you go right. in and he doesn't do the one song that made you buy the tickets. He's an ass. I think- I think if you uh, buy tickets to a Psy concert, you deserve everything you get. That's right. <laughs> I'll applaud that. There you go. Well stated, Mike. Do you like your job? I love my job. Well, there are some people who are not that happy to have their job. I don't think. I'm just guessing. And this is a tape I've been meaning to play for some time. Her name is Jennifer. And she is. Uh, she works with dogs and show dogs. And her job is, Mike, she's a donation specialist. Okay. Oh. Do you know where I'm going with this? She works with dogs, and she is a donation specialist. Yeah, she's not raising funds for the dog show. She's actually working with the dogs. Really? She's like, is this like bad porno? Yeah, sort of. Let's go to her now and hear how Jennifer feels about her job, okay? I guess the million-dollar question is the mechanics of this. How, how do you get the um, sample? I manually manipulate them. Oh, All right. Is that on your business card? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's great for cocktail parties. Though. They're like, go. what do you do for? I'm a lawyer. I'm a, I'm a doctor. Yeah. I get dogs hand. That's it. <laughs> All right, and a uh, little more. Hey, can of a... I just take this opportunity to say hello to an old friend of mine that might be listening, might not? Billy Bouchard. <laughs> Billy Bouchard. <laughs> might be. Rob, do you remember that story? I remember the punchline was, "Mom asked you not to do that on the couch anymore." <laughs> yeah, Billy Bouchard used to eat <laughs> his dog. Yeah. Why? He, would, he would give his dog a manual favor. Yeah. Why? And uh, because he could. And you know and, what? The dog was but, excessively loyal. And Rob, <laughs> hold on a second. So, so John Saglio uh, is, is over, uh, I think it's at a baseball practice when we were, and he's telling the story, and we're unhinging our jaws laughing because he's telling the story about Billy doing this to uh, his dog. And Billy, Billy did this to, to his dog on the couch oh. in the living room, and his sister walked in and said, Hey, Billy. 
Mom told you not to do that in the house. <laughs> oh my god! So it's, it's okay. okay if you do it out in the backyard, but don't what, do it in the house. Yeah, the and, the, and the dog immediately got up and went to the garage. That is so creepy. It's <laughs> so bad. Oh, but Jennifer, the dog, uh, the donation specials, Mike. There is a plan B. Is it like a <laughs> doggy porn collection or something? I mean, no, they don't need. Actually, dogs don't need any help. Ninety-nine percent of the time, I don't need a teaser. There is stage fright sometimes. Yeah, sometimes there's stage fright, and then you need a bitch in heat. <laughs> there you so, go, Mike. So That's messed up. so makes you like your job a little bit more, doesn't it? So gross. It is. And let us close with Mr. Letterman. I know we all came back from a big holiday weekend. You were just talking about holiday traffic. David Letterman yes. said the holiday traffic was horrible. I, I, I will say this: uh, traffic in New York City is worse than any traffic I've ever seen in my entire life especially during the holidays. Every, I'll tell you what, it's like, you know what it's like? It reminds me of Chris Christie. What? How does it remind, <laughs> how does it remind me of Chris Christie? Oh. The holiday traffic here oh. in New York City. I'll tell you how it reminds me of Chris Christie. Every major artery is clogged. Ah, it's hot. Every major artery And that, like that, is your magic audio vault. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. We'll take a break and come back with Buzz Burbank and news right after this on the Mike O'Mara Show. Why I sing a gimme, 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 <laughs> Don't mess with us. You know what? That's a real yeah. jerk store move <laughs> right there. <laughs> now you're laughing. Okay. Are you still playing your music? Right I am. There? I hear it in the background. Yeah, give me, give me, give me that. Uh, welcome back to uh, the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. And now, without further ado, let's get right to it. A man who uh, enjoyed a wonderful New Year's celebration, actually enjoyed Christmas at the Speedwax, and right. I want to hear about that tomorrow. But for now, we bring him in here to do his regular job. Ladies and gentlemen, with the news, here is Buzz Burbank. Thank you, Mike. And we're brought to you today by the Mike O'Mara Show's Amazon page. Thank you for shopping our Amazon page over the holidays, and we urge you to continue to do that. Make that your resolution for the new year. MikeOmeraShow.com slash Amazon, where you'll save money and support the show. Uh, first up, a controversial new study about being overweight. The study from the U.S. Center for Health Statistics concludes that being overweight can actually help you live longer than being what's considered a normal weight. Mike, you should quit fondling that vodka bottle and pay attention. This affects us. I'm sorry, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprisingly, health experts are stunned, some of them calling this new study a pile of rubbish. The study only deals with death rates, though, and does not address how healthy overweight people are or are not. Uh, the study agrees that being obese can cut your life expectancy, just as being underweight can, but it says being a little overweight can help you survive illnesses. For better or worse, it also leads you to take medicines that protect your health. Mm. And there's more damning evidence about high fructose corn syrup today. New tests show that sucrose in any form and that includes fruit juices as well as sugary soft drinks, fool the body into thinking it's still hungry when really it isn't. So you're saying this is... This is all... All... Uh all what? sugars, right? So say, it can be it can be high fructose corn syrup. There are all kinds of sugars, sucrose uh, particularly, not so much lactose or uh, glucose. Uh, glucose. Did you turn uh, my my volume down over there on your side? No, I haven't no. touched it. And I think what we're going to find is there are good sugars and bad sugars. Although I might be about to. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> now this is a this this is a, it was so humble. Mike, mom told you not to do that inside anymore. <laughs> not on the couch. Oh wait, there's someone on the phone. I can't Hello? imagine. Hello. I'm not. I'm doing a show right now. Call back later. Thank you very much. <laughs> Call himself. Uh, granted, I'm, this... I'm really screwing with the show now. No, I, I think apologize. you're fine, Mike. I think you're. Are you done with that call? Uh, no, it's a, uh, for some reason it wants to ring again. Okay. Hello. Hello? Yes. I thought you were going to play something. No, because I, I was. I was going to say if you wanted to hang up, we can do that. You are you done with the call? Yeah, I'm done. There's the hang up. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, granted, this was a small study about sugars, and it's one that's sure to be condemned by the food industry, which continues to defend the man-made sugar known as HFCS, or high-fructose corn syrup. Uh, watching TV could cost you less in the near future thanks to a move by Intel, the computer chip people. Intel, right. Intel is coming out with its own set-top box to replace cable and satellite. Hey, nice box. Connected hey, to, she's box. Connected to the internet, this box would let you subscribe to only the channels you want and none of the ones you don't. 
Instead of a DVR, you'd save your shows to a cloud. The service will include all the usual DVR features, including uh, pause and, and replay, uh, but it also would allow you to access games, movies, and shows on demand. That's Pretty awesome. cool. You know That's what, though? Good. I still hate the cloud. Buzz, did yeah, you say cloud? Kind of, yeah, I did say cloud. Uh, would you like to hear the cloud? I would. What does it sound Ladies like? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the cloud. <laughs> See, Rob? It's a nice cloud. I don't care for it. I don't trust it. I want to hold it in my hand like a CD or a record album. Too heavenly, perhaps. Yeah. Okay, so technically we did go over. Oh, it's the phone again. Let me get that. Hold on a second, Buzz. Sure. Hello? Hello, this is Mitt Bondi calling. I just wanted to give you a call to see if we could speak directly so I can ask for your support. Maybe I'm very busy. I've got to go. I'm sorry, Mitt. Too on. late. Wow. I, too little, too late, really. More about him in a minute, though. Good. Okay, so technically, we did go over the fiscal cliff, but Congress finally made a bipartisan last minute move to bungee us back up there. The good news is individuals making under 400 grand a year, families making under 450, will not see an increase in their income taxes. And Congress has extended tax credits on college tuition, children, and earned income. Extended unemployment benefits will continue for another year. The bad news is your paycheck will still shrink effective immediately now the actual size of the check yes. or the amount no there'll be smaller checks for everyone because i always get paid with a big price is right size check stamp you size. like that and he keeps them in his garage i do by the way i hear the u.s postal service is issuing a commemorative stamp commemorating the u.s postal service <laughs> uh, more money for social security will come out of your check taxes will go up on estates dividends and other capital gains and by the way this solution reached yesterday has driven the stock market crazy we're up uh, 260 some points the last i heard some newsmen's face are even bleeding but, I don't think that's going to last. But Congress has done nothing, and this is why, perhaps, Mike, because Congress has done nothing to deal with the deficit. In fact, the fiscal cliff deal reached yesterday simply delays for two months any decision on the planned big cuts in military and social programs. And but, I think it's really important to point out how long it took to do this. This is simple, just, this is, as they say, here's the cliche. Is he gone? Or is he faking it again? Oh, he could be faking it again. <laughs> Here's the cliche, is that people, I think what he's going to say is the cliche is it's amazing how well people can work together when time is running out. Yeah. Nothing motivates people like a deadline. And the fact is, is that this really, really could have been done three weeks ago. Well, and that's and probably point. even in a better Especially way. Especially what I, I think what he was saying also is that the solution was so simple that yeah, it absolutely exactly. could have been done some time absolutely. ago. If this is all they were going to do, they could have done this well it's in advance. It's tragic it took this long. And they, they love digging their heels in. And they also love having the fact that in another, is it another another month before we have to look at it again well it, it's two months before the vote comes up but uh, those two months will be spent arguing no doubt of course now because things like extending unemployment benefits cost money last night's vote may actually add to the deficit and it includes pork including money for industries including nascar and puerto rican rum that's very bad news for jewish americans hi there How so oh hi bill the pork in the product <laughs> hi mike uh, we missed you glad to have you back yeah, as long as you keep checking without me, everything will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Did you drop your vodka opener? Glad I spent the $50 a month. <laughs> oh, Mike. Now, this lack of a total solution also means the economic recovery will get even slower this year. Consumers and government will have less to spend, meaning business will be reluctant to spend or hire. The other bad news is the bad blood continues on Capitol Hill despite yesterday's unified vote. As House Speaker John Boehner passed Majority Leader Harry Reid outside the Oval Office, Boehner pointed at Reid and told him, go F yourself. When Reed Are asked, you serious? When Reed asked what the speaker was talking about, Boehner simply repeated himself, go F yourself. Wow. Are you, are you kidding me that that's what Boehner did? Boehner said this in front of witnesses on the steps of, uh, of the Oval Office, or just outside the Oval Office. You know, there was a guy, uh, I was watching a lot of CNN last night, and there was a guy that was, uh, I forgot the name of the congressman, you know, there, there are millions of them, they're like rats, right. and uh, you know, this guy was talking about how childlike mm -hmm. uh, the, the Congress has become. I yeah. mean, that they're, they're literally like little children, that are angry little children <laughs> that want their way, and if they don't get their way, they don't get their way. It's amazing. Oh, and by the way, the House also failed to provide any aid to the victims of Hurricane Sandy. The Senate had done its part. It voted. The American people did theirs through donations. The House adjourned without doing a thing. And besides that TV breakthrough we mentioned, the best news we've found in the new year is that the ratings are slipping at America's favorite not news channel, Fox News. The numbers have especially slipped. They did they were down last year anyway, but have especially slipped in the days following the election, which Fox predicted would be a landslide for Mitt Romney. Rachel Maddow, meanwhile, 
is starting to pack them in over at MSNBC. She is so, uh, you know, but they're all partisan and it's, it's not, you know, it, it, both teams have their partisans and, you know, it to me, it, nothing's getting done. This bill that they signed to avert the fiscal cliff, what, what, what angered me about the coverage of this is on CNN, especially, I think maybe it was Wolf Blitzer that was saying, oh, this is a victory for President Obama. No, it's not. This is not a victory for anybody. This is dysfunction. This is at the last minute. This is causing people anxiety. The, the fact that they weren't able to come to an agreement on this deal a month ago or two months ago resulted in probably uh, a tremendous impact on stores and people spending impact. money yeah. and it was such negativity and they're saying a victory and and then when i hear a guy like wolf blitzer saying this is going to be a victory from the for the president before they were even going to vote on it last night in congress i'm like shut up shut yeah. up because right. you don't want to let the toddlers know that this might be a victory. Mm -hmm. God forbid you say something's going to be a victory for Obama. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do this. I think we, uh, you know, we've got a lot of issues that, and and not a lot of smart people. And I don't care whether you're a Tea Party guy, whether you're a left wing Democrat, whether you're a senator, a Republican Democrat. I think we need brighter people in Congress. You need more. No, true quality human beings, and we're not getting them because nobody wants to put themselves through, uh, you know, especially a Republican doesn't want to go through a primary where the right wing of the party is going to hold him hostage. You do this and you about, end up, you do well, this about ahead, every 16 months, Mike. Are you preparing to announce your candidacy? Uh, no, Rob. Too many skeletons. Okay, I understand. You can actually hear them rattle if you try really quickly. But you are delightfully but bright. The thing, the thing about it, yes, but uh, a little brain damage. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. You're hired. There you go. There okay. You go. Holding there up my nice. There's your platform. But here's the There's frustrating budget. thing. All these guys are just such, uh, they're Children. slaves to the soundbite. They don't do anything efficiently, efficiently rather, and it gets frustrating. It really does. And I think we can do so, so much better. When you are... When you're looking at a guy like Grover Norquist as yeah. the spokesperson, who's not even an elected official, right. he created his own job. He made these people sign a pledge. Here's this guy that's got this much importance. You know why? Because he's a giant a-hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why he has attained the level that he has attained. We got real, real problems. And I agree. And the market's up 200 points. Because we're all duh. That's the same yeah. people that invest money. Everybody reacts. There's nothing substantive anymore. When and it's talk, very frustrating to watch. When this. you talk about them being slave to the soundbite, what we've got now is because of the culture of the last, say, 30 years, we've got a, a whole entire Congress, Senate and House, full of people that are great at playing the game. But what yep. they've forgotten is it's not a game. It's real yeah. life. And well it's the said. way we run our country. Well so Thank quit playing the game and start running the country. And, and Rachel Maddow is right up there, and you know what? Her ratings will be down in another month. It's just it's I don't irrelevant. know, Mike. America loves a handsome man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I always like to call Rachel Maddow, who's the first baseman for the New York Mark Teixeira. Yeah, oh, the, Mark Teixeira on no. MSNBC. They should switch one night. Right. <laughs> Finally, what? a Michigan woman <laughs> is free today after spending the holidays in jail for swearing. The woman who has no record and a master's degree in social work was arrested for swearing as she paid an outstanding traffic ticket. The woman says she was swearing at the situation, not at the clerk. The situation I'm... from the Jersey Shore? <laughs> That's right. I'm Buzz Burbank on the Mike O'Mara Show. Thank you very much, Buzz. Our show today was brought to you by TLC Laser Eye Center. I'll tell you something about TLC. They are cool and they're dreamy. You want to see some dreamy doctors? Rob said the other day, where can I go to find a real dreamy doctor? I said, go over and see Dr., uh, the, the good doctors over at TLC. Dr. Holtz, that's right. Their staff is friendly, the surgeons are experienced, the music is too loud. Ladies and gentlemen, TLC's equipment is always state-of-the-art. To schedule a free consult for you and to see what you've been missing, call 877-TLC-2020. That's 877-TLC-2020. Or find TLC online at their new web address, tlcvision.com. That's TLCVision.com, and be sure to tell them you heard about TLC on the Mike O'Mara Show, TLC Laser Eye Center. Well, we're going to be here a long time after this show's done, gentlemen, and uh, we're going to try to work all the bugs out from South Florida and from uh, Manassas, Virginia. Have a great one. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank Ciao. you.